Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Ham Nation, episode number four, recorded June 14th, 2011. Larry Johnston from 38 Special. Hello, world. And I do mean world. This is Bob Heil, K9EID. And we're coming to you from our Illinois Station Lab, just across the river from St. Louis. And uh, the reason I say world is we are just getting so many wonderful emails, phone calls even, from people from Australia, Europe, uh, England. It's really wonderful. I guess uh, we have a lot of viewers. And I want to introduce my co-host to Gordon West. Gordon, how are you doing in Costa Mesa? Oh, everything is fine here and uh, good to see everybody. And uh, thanks so much for our listeners and viewers for their nice comments. You know, it's been really great, really great. And I want to, uh, I want to introduce our special guest tonight, who is K4EB. And, um, you know, we have all kinds of phonetics uh, for our calls, but the best phonetic for Larry is known for excellent bass. And the reason we do that is because Larry is the bass player for 38 Special. Hi, Larry. It's really cool to see you on the Ham Nation show. Thanks for coming. Hello, Bob, and also Gordon. Uh, Gordon's been a hero of mine forever, and of course, you have been a longtime friend, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm an active and avid ham radio operator, and I just want to say hello to everybody out there in ham radio land. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, I might add to the appreciation of uh, all, all of the guys uh, uh, for what they do in ham radio. Well, you certainly will. We want to we want to get to you in a, a little bit about what you do on the road with your amateur radio and 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 how fascinating it is uh, to be on the road and and have connections with anywhere with your handy talkie or your uh, your computer. We'll get into that in just a little. Before we kick all of this off, I have to say hello to a very special Ham Nation viewer and podcast listener, and that's Ron, into IXZ. And the reason for that, you remember last week when we took these crazy little pieces of wire and we, we made an antenna. Remember that? We soldered that together. Well, we were, we're going to see slide number 11. And Ron sent me a picture. He got so enthused last week, he went out and built his own quarter wave two meters antenna. We call it a spike. And um, if, uh, if you can bring that up, Alex, we'll take a look at Ron's antenna that he made, put it on a 10 foot pole in the backyard. And it was kind of funny. He says, I made a transmission and the first guy came back to me. He was so thrilled and he learned about how to do that here on Ham Nation last week. So we were really happy to have, uh, have Ron send a picture of his antenna and tell us about what he learned uh, last week. And there's his antenna. He, he, he said, it's not as straight as yours. Well, you know, that really doesn't make a lot of difference. <laughs> <laughs> Gordo, is that cool or what? <laughs> yeah, that looks like something we'd run in California. You bet. Yes. But it worked. You see, that's, that's all that counts. The RF got there and it worked. Now, last week, we also had a little problem of RF getting into your station, and that caused a disaster. It was in the wrong place. But you got that all corrected. And uh, we might want to tell, uh, tell the audience that what you need is one of these little guys, which is a, an RF bead. You've probably seen them on the end of cables that you buy at a big lump of looks like coal at the... Uh, wires wrapped around. Well, that's a ferrite coil in there, and that ferrite stops the RF. And uh, if you had had them on all of your USB lines, you might not have uh, 
uh, cause the computer to stop. But there again, that's what they're for. And if they're not there and you start transmitting RF around, that's what happens. <laughs> but we wanted to talk about that. And real quickly, uh, then before we get to Larry, I want to know how you did in the VHF contest, Gordo. I know you uh, were at Dallas at the Great Ham Fest, but you got home uh, early enough Sunday to work a bunch of guys. Uh, we talked a little bit about that last week, if you remember. It was the VHF, very high frequency, uh, 50 megahertz. And boy, did I get called down from somebody for saying megacycles. I'm Old cat, I'm sorry. It was mega cycles when I started, and to me, it kind of still <laughs> is. <laughs> well, but, it was uh, a, a great contest. Uh, six meters opened up here in Southern California, double hop, which means we made it all the way through Texas and all the way to the East Coast. And uh, we even had some sporadic E on two meters for about 30 seconds. So it was good conditions, uh -huh. and I know the rest of the country was just working up a store. Wow, I worked uh, worked a bunch of people. It was great. What we're talking about, double hop, is the signals, you know, you think you put up an antenna and you think it's going to go straight out across the plains. No, it doesn't. It goes straight up, just about, or at least uh, a lot further up than it does horizontally. And it hits the ionosphere. And what happened in the middle of this contest it, from California, it was an incredible phenomenon where the signal came up Came, hit the ionosphere, came back down, maybe like Kansas, it went back up, and they got a double hop into New York or wherever on the East Coast. That was amazing, just simply amazing. Larry, did you get into any of the VHF stuff last week? Uh, no, uh, actually, uh, I'm always on the road during a weekend, so uh, no, uh, I, I can't run any contests. Uh, mm -hmm. I do uh, mess around with six meters a little bit here at home uh, and uh, work a few little bit. Uh, I've only got like a five element beam of about 35 feet. So uh, no, no, no big gun station here on six meters. Uh, let me tell you, that's all you need on six meters. That's what I have up here is five element beam. And it, it's all you need. When the band opens, it's really great. Well, that, I just wanted to cover a couple of those things that we had gotten from the... Uh, uh, from the audience, there's so many more, but I just was so fascinated that, that Ron is so enthused. Now he's going to go get his uh, the rest of his license, and he's using uh, Godot's books to do that. So um, you see, it, it, it's just all fun and games, I'll tell you. Larry, I wanted to talk a little bit about your music. We, we, we really need to talk about... Uh, some of the background that you started with and where you've gone with uh, with this wonderful band 38 special and you might want to talk a bit about that well actually uh i got my start with uh, the famous band leonard skinner uh, the original version uh, i was with them from 67 to 71. i first got my ham radio license in 62 uh, a novice and then a conditional but then when I started getting into music and cars and uh, the uh, ladies, uh, I let my uh, I let my license uh, expire until 1990. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was the original bass player for Leonard Skinner, and uh, they still owe me money. It's <laughs> 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 all right. I'm not worried about it. As long as I got enough money to buy radios and computers, I'm I'm fine. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, I'm. I'm glad I got back into the hobby. You know, a newspaper article in 1990 sparked me back into it. And uh, I realized I had money to buy a decent radio. So uh, <laughs> that, that, the rest is history. <laughs> oh, that's great. There's a, Alex has got some good pictures he's going to start rolling here. And uh, so uh, the uh, guys watching the video can see a couple of pictures of you and the band and so on and as you're playing that great uh, great bass he, he he plays a really roaring bass line it's really really good uh, larry did did you uh, uh did you have any kind of an elmer or somebody that helped you when you got your license how did how did you do that well, I actually started shortwave listening, and then, uh, you know, with uh, the help of Allied Radio, I bought a couple of kits, and, uh, you know, uh, I put them things together. It was the worst mess of cold solder joints and uh, and uh, uh, unclipped leads and just all the, I mean, the worst. 
I, I think the first, my first contact was with the FCC monitoring station on, uh, you know, on uh, about 26 megahertz or something. They got one of my parasitic oscillations on there, you know. But uh, that's why I said now <laughs> I'm glad I can afford good equipment. <laughs> Oh gosh, you guys are on the road so much. You're at 38 special. Do you ever ever take a break? I look at your tour schedule, and it's my gracious. You guys are just you're out there all the time, and, and I I don't know how you do it, but uh, you do a lot of, a lot of it on the bus too. You're not flying the private jets. You guys are tried and true rock and rollers in that bus we just saw, right? Yeah, well, lately it's been more, uh, since we do just weekends, it's been more uh, the mercy of the airlines. And uh, Lord knows uh, how taxing that can be. You know, uh, I, I left my hotel at 4.30 yesterday morning and didn't get home till about 8 o'clock at night. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, I would have loved to turn the radio on, but I didn't. You know, you know uh, that's the way it is. <laughs> but I turned it on today. <laughs> you turned it on today. <clears throat> Tell us about you have a new a, a new acquisition in the K four EB uh, ham shack. Is that right? Uh yeah. Well, it's uh, ICOM uh, ninety one hundred, uh, which I got when uh, and I've uh, hooked it up through the remote RSBA one software, and uh, uh, I haven't had a chance to transmit with it, but it's communicating with the radio really good, and uh, you know. Uh, that, that'll be a, a, the ticket with me along with the D-Star that I use uh, because I spend a lot of time in hotel rooms and I hate watching television, so I'd much rather uh, uh, have some sort of ham radio. Yeah, you um, um, you were telling me about your D-Star stuff and uh, that it's, it's fascinating uh, what that can give you when you're in a room by yourself uh, after the band plays and everybody goes away what can you do well you can talk to the world with that uh, why don't we get into that and, and tell the tell the ham nation audience just exactly what you're doing with your uh, your computer and how you get it on and, and all of that so go ahead and tell us some of that if you would please Okay, well, uh, D Star has been around for a few years, and actually, my friend, uh, the manager of Ham Radio Outlet, KJ4VO in uh, in Atlanta, I'm sure a lot of uh, gentlemen listening know him. He says, uh, "Larry, man, I got the ticket for you, and it's a little thing called a DV dongle. I'm a, I'm gonna put it up here. I hope you can see it. Uh, it's about okay. the size of a pack of gum. Okay, there it is, and." Uh, uh, you know, yeah, uh, it's it's almost like Skype, you know, except for uh, you're uh, hooked up through a ham radio network, and you can even go to websites. Uh, I sent you a list of the websites where you can see who's on, and uh, as you make friends and all that, you can find out which repeaters and which reflectors they're on, and uh, you know, uh, there uh, there's I mean, there's thousands of hams on on D Star. And, uh, you know, it's not just uh, the, the little DV dongle, which is a tool you can use on the road, but uh, it's also uh, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, you can get in on RF, which, uh, you know, most, most major areas have repeaters, which can link to other repeaters. It's kind of like Echo Link, only I think it's way better because it's more digital and the quality the quality is just unbelievable uh, as far as the communications goes, you know, uh, just uh, real crisp and clear. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I've got a lot of friends out there. I can talk to my friends at home. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's worth checking into, D-Star. And uh, uh, it's relatively new. So, uh, uh, and it, it's something that somebody with a technician license can talk all over the world going in through VHF. And that's one of the pluses of it, you know. Uh, so many people are are just uh, relegated to two meters and six meters, and uh, they don't get to uh, realize the worldwide communication. So exactly. uh, I highly recommend it. Well, the, uh, for our listeners that uh, that aren't hams, there are various classes of license and. If you go do the uh, the technician license, you can operate everything above uh, 
the top end of 10. Uh, tell them about where that lies, Gordo, how, how some of the different license affects uh, where we can operate and all that. The uh, technician class license is a powerful license, and uh, as was said, uh, they have 10 meters from 28.3 to 28.5, as well as uh, 6 meters, all of 6 and 2 meters and 222 and 440 and all the way up. But uh, most exciting is uh, the D-STAR system with a brand new technician class operator can literally work the world. In fact, at Dallas, uh, Connie Ballantyne, KB0ZSG, one of our uh, listeners, said that uh, she's going to Europe and she already knows who she's going to see over there because every day she talks to Europe via D-STAR. So she has the vacation already built in with plenty of friends, and she's working the world with just the beginner technician class license. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a great thing for brand new hams. It's only a 35-question test, multiple choice, and about a month study, and uh, they can earn that first amateur radio technician class license, as Larry was saying, and work the world. That's, that's really great. Do you play with the, the dongle that he had? Do you, <clears throat> you do any of that? Um, I have a D-Star unit myself, and I'm, I do a lot more listening uh, than uh, talking. And I'm just amazed as to uh, who comes up on the air, including Ham Radio Outlet Atlanta. <laughs> uh, you hang out there a lot, don't you, Larry, in Atlanta with Mark and the guys? Uh, well, I don't get in there too often, but I, I guarantee you I've contributed to their economy. <laughs> is that why your name is on the front door or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> the K4 of EB Memorial Bank account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Well, we... Uh, um, we need to really get further into that <clears throat> that whole digital Aside of what we're doing, uh, the, when I say we, we're talking about the industry, uh, it, it's brought so many new hams in because th the computer is your radio. It, it really is. You can tell your dongle where you want to go and what you want to do. And if you remember last week, we talked about repeaters. That happens in the VHF frequencies and the UHF ultra high frequencies. And... and it's a situation that they'll put up a big transmitter on a tall tower, or a water tower, or a bank building in a town, and that thing will run a couple of hundred watts. And then when your little handy talkie or your uh, computer or what, however you want to get there through the internet to the transmitter, it then sends that signal out in a lot further than you could get just with your handy talkie. And those repeaters is what we're talking about that allows us to go in and make it kind of a gateway. And that, that it just works so well. Uh, Gordo, you got a couple of handy talkies. In, in fact, uh, uh, you've got a, a new one from, from China. Uh, that's an amazing little handy talkie. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, though. Everybody pronounces it different. So <laughs> let's see that handy dandy you got. Yeah. Uh, they they pronounce it, uh, I believe, Wushan. And there's another one called TYT. And for those uh, listeners, I'm holding a dual band. That means two meters and 440 handheld that uh, normally sells for a couple hundred dollars, as Larry will tell you, even up to three and four and five hundred dollars for the advanced ICOM America gear. And these small Made in China radios were seen selling in Dallas as well as the Dayton Hamvention for ninety nine ninety five and uh, another fifteen or twenty dollars. So the the Chinese handhelds are certainly uh, worth consideration, but only if you have a pal that knows how to hook them into the laptops and get them uh, programmed for the local repeaters. <laughs> well, the handy talkies have really taken off. There's a <clears throat> the G4 picture we got here of you. Uh, uh, I think it was taken in one of the stores, but there's just a whole field of these things today. And that, that's just amazing. Uh, and that's just a few of them, isn't it, Gordo? 
Yeah, so this is part of uh, Larry's collection. I'm just kidding you, Larry, but uh, <laughs> we would all wish that we could have this many. But, but what's so interesting is the small handhelds, uh, each manufacturer, Kenwood, Yesu, ICOM, Alinko, and a few others, all of these handhelds are usually dual band. This is a digital one uh, from Kenwood Corporation. Uh, unlike D-Star, this one concentrates on automatic position reporting system, which means here is a handheld that has a built-in GPS, and Don, W6 GPS, who helped uh, get uh, with Susie this computer back on the air after I blew it up last week by ridiculously uh, transmitting, what was I thinking, uh, Susie and Don got me back up. But uh, Don works closely with the manufacturer, uh, both here as well as the uh, AbMap manufacturer in Europe. And now you can squawk your position. You can see where everybody else is. Plus, it puts you onto the Internet. So, oh, my gosh, everybody can see where you are today. Larry, that's a good and that's a bad thing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't want nobody to know where I'm at. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of high handhelds, I got a funny story. I hope it won't take too long. Oh, but uh, one one day we were uh, we were in the same hotel with a famous Leonard Skinner band. Uh, that, you know, and uh, right next door to me, I, I was asleep in the afternoon, and I heard some bass coming from that room, and. Uh, uh, I surmised that it was the bass player of uh, Leonard Skinner now, uh, Robert uh, and Kearns, and uh, excellent player, great guy. And uh, he was over there playing, uh, practicing in his room. So I broke out one of my little seven watt uh, ICOM uh, handhelds, and uh, I just uh, I figured I'd take a shot in the dark. I went, uh, "This is Mars calling Robert Kearns." And about about uh, 30 seconds later, I heard a door slam next to more of me. He was running out in his shorts, you know. He said, man, Mars just called me on my amplifier. <laughs> you that is son of a gun. <laughs> and I ran out there with my hand held. I said, uh, no, nope, it was me. <laughs> it was me, not quite Mars. That's great. <laughs> It's, oh, but we have a lot of fun doing all this. I'll tell you, a ham radio is just full of things you can do like that. Uh, the, the wonderful thing about it is that it doesn't cost a lot of money. The licenses are fairly easy to get now. And, and the further you get into it, the more you want to be down on the lower frequencies where you can talk all around the world with a 120-foot piece of wire. You can, you can talk anywhere practically. And... Uh, it, it's so much fun to be able to put this stuff together. And, and all of us have, have, have started the same way. We started out uh, as a novice, usually on CW, on code. And then we built ourselves up to the technician license and uh, just kept going. Uh, what, got you, uh, what got you over the top? You said you listened to a short wave, Larry, but what really piqued your interest? Did you know another ham or, or were, were there uh, people that, that helps you uh, as you got started back in 1962? Well, actually, when I first got my license, uh, I didn't know anybody, but, uh, you know, I was only about 12 years old and I'd ride around on a bicycle. And if I seen an antenna, a beam or something up in the air, I'd, I'd just walk up there and knock on the door. You know, and I got to know, I, I got to know some people, you know, um, uh, and uh, uh, got to be friends with some of them. Uh, actually drank my first beer with one, uh, 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 WA4SGF, Ed Edwards here in Jacksonville. Uh, he's now a silent key, but uh, we used to go to no, no Fars meetings, North Florida Amateur Radio Society, and he'd stop at Jack's Liquors. And I was about 14 years old, and I drank one beer. And man, <laughs> uh, that, that was that was one that was a buzz. One beer at uh, fourteen years old. Oh my! Well, um, 
Gordo, that, that story sounds very, very familiar because I think it was Joe Walsh that did the same thing. He saw this piece of coax running up the side of a building, and every Saturday morning he'd see this thing on top of the, uh, the apartment building turn. So he just followed that piece of coax or wire and went into a window and knocked on the door. And that started Joe's ham radio uh, career. And Larry, that that was in 1962 also. So that must have been the year for, for musicians to become hams, evidently. That, that's a cool story. And what city was that that you did that? That was actually in Jacksonville, Florida, where I am now. I, I have uh, uh, two, uh, actually three different QTHs. Uh, but uh, right now I'm in Jacksonville, and I also have a house on a lake and a camper on a river. Uh, of course, there's ham shacks in every one of them. I've only got three ham shacks. Uh, I don't think I'll ever uh, beat Joe Walsh. How many does he have? Like seven? <laughs> oh, I don't think so. No, basically he's got really one that's just amazing with all the gear. And we we need to to qualify a couple of things. I I know the chat rooms talked about it, and I've gotten some from uh, emails this week about some of the some of the nomenclature we use and we're, we're going to start something uh, trying to get a thing up on our website somewhere where we can kind of put it in a corner and be our own little ham nation thing and, and help you with some of these but you mentioned qth and what that means is it's really a sh it's shorthand for the morse code instead of saying where you live or where are you you just have to send three letters q T H, and when you do that in code, you've saved some, uh, the question of where are you or where do you live. You only have to send three letters. So we have a lot of short wave on, uh, short cuts on the. We have a short wave too, Gordo. But um, uh, when he was mentioning Q T H, that means where are you? And um, there, there's a lot of that. We're gonna start getting some of that together for you so you'll be able to refer back to it there's a lot of places that you can find the meaning of all that and uh, gordo you've got it in just about every one of the books don't you yeah i sure do and uh, we hope that uh, the q code what that is called will uh, stay around like qsl and that is what you showed last week uh show off those great contact cards that you made uh, with other hams across the country so Ham radio does have some jargon. 73 means best regards. Ladies, for those listening and watching, 88 means hugs and kisses. Bob? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's true. And it, that all comes from the Morse code. And uh, a lot of guys carry it over into the just the jargon that we use, but that's where it comes from when you hear some of these letters. One other thing that somebody asked me said, how do you know where somebody lives if you want to find out? Well, there's a wonderful website uh, that's called QRZ. Tell them a little bit about that one, Gordo. Sure. Uh, just write uh, on the computer, qrz.com, and wait till you see what comes up. First of all, if you know a ham's call sign, you can go ahead and put their call sign, type it in, and it'll give their uh, name and address and even give you a little uh, Google map. And uh, QRZ is full of news, and it is a great place to uh, begin searching out for your friends who might be already licensed and a good all organization uh, point to go to on your computer is of course the American Radio Relay League ARRL dot ORG and there you'll see anything and everything about ham radio through the American Radio Relay League our nonprofit organization that keeps hams hamming the uh QRZ site also has a lot of uh, swap shops, as I call them, and you can buy gear, and uh, they have a lot of forums of reviews on different things. You can spend a lot of time on QRZ.com, and I like to read through some of the bios, bios of, of different people that you work and uh, put their call in, and a lot of times they'll have their picture in there. 
And uh, so uh, QRZ is dot uh, com is a place to get that. So that's super. Uh, the other one, what is the other one? Is it uh, the other one is Eham Gordo? Is that right? Oh, yeah. If you're looking for a ham radio goodie, Eham has it. And Eham also has reviews. And uh, some great reviews come from a product made by Yesu. Y-A-E-S-U, that also does APRS, and it's got the little GPS on the outside of the equipment. So there's actually two manufacturers of handhelds that do APRS. And look what I got on EHAM. This is great. Larry, you'll like this. This is an antenna that can be doubled up so you don't uh, get anybody in the back of the head uh, as you're walking around. But uh, how much fun, and this is just a little inexpensive handheld. This one's made by Yesu that you can curl up the antenna and uh, be able to operate. And Susie in 6GLF is giving me, there she is, she's giving me a couple more antennas to look at as well. And there's some great ones out there, Bob. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of things that you can use for your handy talkies and uh, of course, the other thing when you're working in the car, you could hook it to your uh, your little quarter wave spike antenna that you could put on top of your roof and uh, get the antenna outside. That helps a lot. And uh, even if you would put that on top of your tower or up on, as as uh, we saw a while ago, Ron did that. That was really super when you put it outside and hook up your handy talkie to that. Boy, that really extends the uh, uh, the whole. Uh, coverage of a little couple of watt uh, handy talkie uh, what do you do on the road um, with uh, with that are you using any handy talkies at all Larry uh, do you carry anything with you uh, yeah I, I carry uh, all three of the the ICOM D star radios the, the 92 AD uh, the 80 and also the 91 and uh, I actually uh, Sometimes I'll be sitting out by the pool and I can access D Star with this little thing called a DVAP. It's DVAP, DV Access Point. It's actually, a, I think, a 250 milliwatt repeater that you can set the frequency uh, through your computer and you can access uh, all, any reflector or any repeater. Uh, 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 as long as you have it programmed into your handheld. So, uh, you know, I, I like to sit out by the pool and, uh, especially on a day off and, uh, just sit there and monitor, uh, one of the, the my favorite reflectors, uh, is, uh, a 30 Charlie, which includes most of the, uh, reflector 030 port C. And it, uh, it's a lot of the uh, ham radio operators in the Atlanta area. And then there's another one, uh, Reflector 001, uh, port C, that has the ham radio operators from all over the world. And uh, once you log on to this with your handheld, you know, uh, uh, the, actually the DVAP has a little, short little stubby antenna on it. Uh, there it is, right there. And uh, you can unscrew it. It has an SMA connector, and you can put a bigger antenna on it. And... Uh, so, uh, you know, it typically has a range of about a half a mile. If you want to go out for, for a walk or something, you can carry your handheld with you and still be hooked up to the D-Star network. So uh, that's another uh, little uh, uh, product. In, uh, 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 and I do not own any DVAP or dongle. I'm just talking about it because I like it. And uh, wow. they're, they're available through Ham Radio Outlet. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah, Gordo, you uh, you using your uh, APRS? You have a uh, an adapter for your handy talkie. How do you couple that into your handy talkie? Uh, just a single cable takes the output of the Kenwood to the. Uh, AbMap uh, G6 handheld, and again, thanks to Don W6GPS, he's got the connection uh, absolutely solid between both manufacturers, so you just plug in the AbMap, and we'll show that in a couple of weeks right here on the screen, or maybe Susie will get it out of the bag and we'll show it off tonight, and uh, that way, uh, your little Kenwood 
can not only be one that sends your position throughout the world, and uh, you look it up at aprs.fi, aprs.fi, as in Foxtrot India, and uh, you can see hams by their call sign literally all over the world. And the nice thing about uh, any of these small little ham radio handhelds, as Larry was saying, is when you're on the air, whether you're going through the exotic and wonderful D-Star system, or you're just operating through a repeater, or maybe just talking simplex, everybody else is listening. So it's like a giant party line. And if you get lost and can't figure out whether to turn left or right, uh, you can figure it out on the uh, handheld because folks will come back to you and uh, will ask you, uh, where are you now? And then they'll get you squared away. And here's Susie. She's got the uh, ab map uh, mapping device. And we'll bring it on over here and uh, we'll show it to you. It's that one right down there, Suze, with all the cables on it. And um, this is it. Isn't that amazing? That's the mapping device. And this is the best part. And Larry and Bob, you'll agree, this is the best part of ham radio. <laughs> it's a thousand million different wires that never seem to get sorted out. Thanks, Suze. Bob? <laughs> Gordon has got a bunch of wires hooked to what it looks like a, a little a monitor, what a little five or six, seven inch screen. And I'm glad that's, I'm not the only one that has wires everywhere. <laughs> you have to have wires. I'm sorry. It's, it just can't happen. They call it wireless, but I got news for them. <laughs> Especially, you can imagine all the stuff behind that rack over there, and that's just the old stuff. I got all the other new stuff here where you can't, or where the camera's not pointed, but <laughs> it's just amazing. But you have to have wires, but that's the fun of it. And, and, and you learn, you soon learn where they all go and what they all do, and you're changing things all the time to make it better. That's always the best part. Larry, do you get into any kind of SDR uh, of software-defined radios? Have you played with any of that? Well, actually, you know, a, a lot of the newer radios are uh, are uh, like that. You know, the uh, Elecraft K3, and uh, you know, uh, I have uh, uh, N4PY uh, control software uh, for uh, most of my radios, so it can interface to my logging uh, programs. But <laughs> man, I tell you, I gotta say something about them wires. That that's how profanity was invented. You start messing with it with them things, and uh, there's a whole lot of cussing gets started. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I guess that you know uh, I've I've had some of the ten tech radios, which are uh, uh, software defined, and uh, I've never had a flex radio. Uh, uh, I have to say that, but uh, you know, most modern radios nowadays can be controlled by software and. And uh, especially if you're into the remote thing, which I like to do, you know, uh, uh, software defined is uh, definitely the ticket. Well, that the remote thing uh, is is an amazing thing, and it works so well. It was hard to do at first, but now, uh, as you say, most every radio you can you can do that with, and uh, the little. Uh, um, software defined things work great. Uh, TS 480, just about all of them will do that. The 480's got the program built right in it. The TS 480 is a Kenwood radio, and all you do is plug it into your computer, and uh, then when you talk to your computer from anywhere in the world, you're actually controlling that radio. But the software defined even takes it a step further. We're going to have the guys on from Flex here, and uh, they're, they're getting all their things together so we can have a really nice program on software-defined uh, equipment. They, um, they build it down in Austin, Texas, and we're very excited about having them come on and tell you about that because you got this little black box, and you plug it into your computer, and the next thing you know, you have a transmitter and a receiver. You can... Go anywhere. You tell it what frequencies you want. You want whether it's going to be AM, FM, sideband, CW, RTTY, and all of that kind of stuff. And and what is RTTY, Gordo? What's that crazy thing I just came up with? RTTY. Oh yeah, uh, that is a radio teleprinter. And RTTY, one of the many digital modes that uh, behind me here in the shack, 
We'll play uh, probably a couple of weeks from now and look at the digital side of uh, ham radio. And again, um, I almost forgot to mention on this little charting device, uh, the Kenwood will actually output, and so will the new Yesu positions of local hams. So, Larry, you can see all of the hams around you that are squawking APRS just by attaching this little screen to your uh, Kenwood or your Yesu radio. This one's specifically for the Kenwood D72 or the Mobile, and um, it's fun to see all the other hams around you, and they're looking at you, and you're looking at them on a map. That's that's pretty wild, isn't it? How how does it know that? <laughs> how does it know that? Oh my! Well, that uh, um, the the software defined thing is is really really coming on. It's very strong. Uh, you can do just about everything with it now. They have transverters. You can take it up into the VHF frequencies, and uh, it works extremely well everywhere it goes. Uh, the audio band pass can be, it can be anything from daylight to dark. It doesn't make any difference because you are going to tell it what you want it to do frequency-wise, how you want it to sound. And uh, you you become the engineer. You design your own radio, and that little black box follows what the computer does, and away you go. It's, it's really cool. But uh, the guys from Flex, F-L-E-X, from Austin, Texas will be on with us and we'll really get into that uh, because it's, uh, it, it's a fabulous thing and it's, it's not up and coming anymore. It's here. And they've got, I think, now three or four models uh, of that. Uh, you just came from uh, Hamcom, the big convention in Dallas, Gordo. I would imagine that Flex had a, a strong representation there at that show, didn't they? Uh, they certainly uh, did, Bob. In fact, Flex had one of the largest wide big screens I've ever seen displaying a panoramic view of the ham radio bands. And you would like look this way, and then you would look like this way. And Larry, that was covering like 400 kilohertz up and down the band. So, boy, if we only had this back when uh, Larry and I were, and you too, Bob, were in our shortwave listeners day. But quite amazing that you can now take a very small box with terrific digital filtering and be able to display it on a widescreen TV. Wow, that was, uh, that must have been something. Sorry, I couldn't be there. But uh, I, I know that they can do just about anything you want to do with that radio. We're, uh, we're very sad in that we lost one of their great engineers and beta testers. Uh, in fact, he was buried yesterday in Arlington National Cemetery. He was a great friend of all amateur radio, very famous W5GI. John was instrumental in helping the Flex Company really get somewhere because they needed people to help beta test it. And he lived in Austin. And um, he was a great guy. Uh, and he had every, I, I don't know how many hundreds of radios, but over the years, he's had just about every radio there is. He'll keep them for a couple of weeks and they're gone. It was always fun to talk to John because about the second question after how are you would be, um, what kind of radio do you have today? <laughs> he, he just wanted to try everything and that's what he did through his whole life. And then he moved to Austin and that was about the time Flex started cranking that up. Did you know uh, uh, John uh, Larry? Did you, you did you meet John? Uh, no, I've heard the call sign, but uh, from what what you said about him, it's, it kind of sounds like me. Every time a new <laughs> radio comes out, I want to get one. <laughs> there you and, are. Uh, I look at it like you don't buy radios; you just rent them. You know, if you don't like them, you turn around and sell them at a good cost to your buddies. That's, That's it. That's true. Gordo, did you know John, uh, John Basilato? Uh, I've met him a couple of times, and what a great man and a huge contribution to ham radio. Yes, he, uh, he was on my beta team since the gold line back in 1999, and just about every one of the products that I would come up with, I'd send them to him, and 
he'd come back to me and tell me good, bad, or whatever, and would have suggestions. And so the entire uh, amateur radio community lost a great friend. He was a colonel in the Air Force, and thus he was uh, entered into uh, Arlington just yesterday. And Pat and his wife, Pat, his wife, and his son, Chris, and their whole family were we really are, are sad about John. He's a, he was a great guy. Well, I uh, I want to also ask Larry about what that is on the back wall that we're seeing. Larry, how come how come we don't have some of the what are, what are those on the back wall, man? They uh, they're beautiful shining disc of what uh, songs or albums or whatever. Well, actually, they're gold and platinum records. Uh, uh, if you sell 500,000 uh, records, uh, uh, which is hard to do nowadays, uh, but uh, the, these are from the, the 80s uh, when our band was really, really big. And uh, 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 like I said, the 500,000 is gold and a million is platinum. Wow. I've got more of them on the wall down at my lake house uh, uh, because uh, the house is bigger. Uh, but uh, I've actually had a lot stolen from me because uh, somebody broke in my house, even even though all they are is plastic with coating on them. Uh, I guess the people that stole them thought that, uh, that maybe they might be solid gold or platinum. Okay. But uh, anyway... Uh, uh, 38 Special has sold probably uh, 20 million records in our career. My goodness, and I bet you this is one of them. Yeah, that's one of the biggies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I bet you everybody that's watching or listening knows of that song, has heard that song, and maybe have bought the record, so... Uh, we have to really thank you and the group for bringing us such great music throughout the years. That's really super duper. And, uh, and to know well, that. You. To know well, that we, we just happen to be in the right place at the right time, I guess. You know, uh, the music lives on, you know, and we still play. We do 100 shows a year, and uh, 38 Special is alive and well. We're going to drive it till the wheels fall off. Uh, that's our story, and we're sticking with it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I know you're doing a lot of festivals and uh, county fairs and things like that. And uh, uh, if some of the guys want, if they uh, get to some of these places where you're playing, I'm sure if they uh, uh, try to ask for you, you'd want to meet some of them. I, I know I, you'll talk to them on the air, but uh, if they uh, get up around the stage after the show, why well, you probably hang around a little bit and uh, we'd love to talk to some of the hams, I'm sure. Yeah, we try to, but sometimes our schedule uh, makes us have to leave. But uh, our schedule is at 38special.com, 38special.com. And uh, uh, I'd love to uh, meet some fellow ham radio operators. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, but like I said, sometimes our schedule, they whisk us out of there. You know, you know how it is. I sure do. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough thing out there on the road. But uh, I know that you enjoy it, and uh, the band is just so good. I, I think they really have, in the last few years that I've been listening to some of the things they're doing live, is it, you just keep getting better, and that's, that's really great. I, I love it to hear the, hear the guys crank up new stuff, and they're not getting tired. They're getting more excited. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with the technology, don't you? It, the, the, the sound systems have gotten better. Your amplifiers got better. Uh, sometimes you're still using the same old guitar. What, what are you playing for amplifiers and bass guitar today? Well, I'll have to say the microphones have got better. <laughs> and we all know who's responsible for that. But... Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, we all use an in-ear monitors, uh, which saves our hearing. And, you know, the days of the big old stacks of amplifiers on the stage are gone. And uh, so, uh, you know, it it, uh, it actually makes for a better experience. Everybody in the band can hear each other better, which in turn makes us play better. 
you know, uh, uh, it used to be, you know, we get up there on stage and, uh, you know, uh, 120 decibels of uh, stacks of Marshall amplifiers uh, were right behind you, you know, it, it was just total chaos. So uh, and that's probably one reason why the, the, the band is better. Plus, I mean, we've progressed and, you know, uh, we take more pride in what we're doing, you know, and uh, it's just a, uh, 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 we got a good ball club and we moved the ball real well. <laughs> oh yeah. That's great. Uh, Gordo, I, we got to get one of these uh, programs together for the satellite thing too. Uh, I know that you and um, a couple of your friends out there, Clint, especially you guys are doing a lot of satellite work. We had a picture of you last week um, after you left us there for a short time. Uh, of you guys, you were out in the middle of a fairground. It probably was the Orange County Fair with an antenna, and you were talking to the space. I don't know if it was a shuttle or what were you doing, and how did you do that? Because you just had a little handy talkie, walkie talkie, handy talkie, same thing. Uh, what were you doing? Well, uh, here is the radio. Uh, this one's from Alinko, and uh, we had a couple of others as well from Kenwood and ICOM and Yesu. Uh -huh. So. Working the satellites is really fun in that uh, Clint Bradford, Mr. Satellite, was uh, able to give us quite a nice uh, demonstration at a county fair at uh, one of our low Earth orbit satellites. And again, with just the technician class license, the entry level almost pushover exam license, no code test, um, and a small dual band handheld like this one, uh, Clint was able to, on a small handheld antenna, work stations uh, almost a thousand miles away. So it's just one more area of ham radio fascination where you take along your little handheld radio and FM, frequency modulation, able to talk through a satellite that keys you up to other stations up to five to 700 miles away on just a handheld. That's great. You don't need a lot of power. That's wonderful. And we have a, we're lining up a, another program for everybody. That's why you don't want to miss this every week. I mean, we've got so much stuff coming on. We're going to bring the kids in that uh, I've got some great video uh, and then great audio of these children uh, here on earth in a school and they had questions that they asked Sandy Mangus who is an astronaut and and Sandy would answer those questions for those kids and it, it was just unbelievable uh, to do be able to do that and they set up their antennas out in the parking lot and they talk to this to the uh, astronauts it, and, and almost Every one of the space shots, am I right on this, Gordo? Uh, nowadays, every one of those uh, space shots has a ham aboard, and just about every astronaut's a ham. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, we've licensed a whole bunch of them, and uh, luckily they've uh, gone through the Gordo books and uh, passed their tests with flying colors. But you know, Bob, uh, we heard some stories from many of our uh, listeners and viewers, and Bob and I uh, really appreciate the uh, input we get in the chat rooms. And this little radio right here is called a Family Radio Service Transceiver, little FRS. This one was owned by Miss Moo. And this little radio was able to send out and signal for help in Joplin because they had a tie-in between the small no license family radio service handhelds and ham radio operators that monitor the FRS bands in an emergency and out here in Southern California we have that same connection and that is a marriage of ham radio operators licensed for those in emergency groups like CERT groups like Miss Moo was and able to use these small, no license FRS radios in an emergency. That's, that's a really great service, isn't it? It's really helped all of the emergency guys. That That's wonderful. And I, I, uh, I applaud all of the, the ladies and the men that's doing that because uh, without it, uh, there's going to be more lives lost and there's a lot of lives saved and we've seen a ton of it this year all over the country so again it's the ham radio uh, operators that put their time and 
and all of their funds together to buy the radios and stuff like that. It's, it's really great. Have you done any kind of emergency stuff, Larry? Do you get involved in that at all? Well, I actually used to be a member of Skywarn. Uh, I have a lot of friends, uh, you know, especially people in the D Star network. Uh, that uh, a lot of them are now are uh, really involved in the fires in Florida. We uh, we are having a lot of fires, smokes everywhere. It's been such a drought here in Florida, but uh, uh, we have we really have a good uh, 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 ARES uh, the whole. Northeast Florida area, all the way down to Orlando, uh, with the help of, uh, uh, I, I got to give a shout out to WB6 RTH, Mike Lee. He is the gentleman that has put all this together and is responsible for uh, the whole Northeast Florida D Star Network, which is totally dedicated to uh, amateur radio emergency service. My goodness, that's great. AIARES is doing a lot of things. That's, that's wonderful. We, um, uh, we have a, a great week coming up here. The next program is going to be dedicated to Field Day. And Field Day happens uh, on the, what is it, whatever it is, the last weekend of this month. Field Day is an amazing event. It starts on, on, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But mainly it's, it's a thing where we can go out in the field and set up our equipment. And I'm talking about everything. Uh, you don't plug into the electric. You have to take your generators. Uh, they'll have bicycles that uh, pedal generators, and somebody's pedaling for 24 hours. They have solar panels, all kinds of things. you got to be able to put your antennas up. You're going to see guys uh, using big slingshots uh, to get antenna wires over trees. Next week, we're going to have uh, quite a, a story about how field day gets put together, what we do, and so on. And Gary Pierce is going to be with us uh, uh, to tell about all of that. And Gordo's not going to be here because he's going to be with a whole course. Where are you going? Are you going to San Diego? Is that where that is, uh, your school for uh, field day? Uh, we're doing, it's called Field Day Academy. It's actually in Santa Ana. And guess what? Tom, Whiskey Six Whiskey Charlie, is going to be Skyping us. And maybe if you want to go to us for about uh, a minute, we'll give you a tour of what we hope is an emergency operations center, big field day site. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to that. It, it's quite a, quite a thing. A, a lot of hams live for this one weekend. I mean, they get ready for this all year to be able to go out and work field day. So we'll be talking about that all next, uh, next week on the whole program. Gary will be here and uh, be a, telling you about the exciting things that go on with that. And we got, uh, we've got so many things planned, and we hope that you can uh, – Stay in touch with this email. You have our email address on the bottom of the screen there. And uh, if not, look it up on, uh, on qrz.com and you can find it there. Usually we all have our email addresses there too. And, um, and we've got, um, we got the contest guys coming on. Uh, uh, K3LR, I'll be doing that. And then we're going to have a very special program. And I'm, I don't know how many, I lost count this week of how many emails I got. Come to find out today that the guy that I wanted to come have to have come on here with me is a longtime friend, and he's a great friend of yours, Larry, W0FM, Terry Sheeler. And I found out that you guys are friends also today. Terry has worked. You ready for this, everybody? Check this out. Terry has worked 238 countries. Now, Gordo, how, how many countries are there total right now? If, if you had a 500-foot a, a antenna and a, a, a kilowatt of power, legal, uh, of course, how, how many countries are there right now? Uh, there's a little over 360, and I imagine our DXers that are part of our listeners and viewers can give me the exact number. But boy, if he worked 250, he's almost there. Oh, no, no. You haven't heard the rest of the story. He worked 238 right now, confirmed, and he did it with antennas, wires in his attic. And so wow. for everybody that says, oh, I got to have this big tower and, and or you live in an HOA thing where, oh, we can't have an antenna over here. Don't need it. 
Terry is going to come on here and show you how he did it. So, uh, Larry, I, I'm really, uh, really excited to get Terry on here. Maybe we can find you on the road. You can join us for a few minutes. How about that one, Larry? Yeah, well, um, you know, Tuesday nights are usually good for me, so just let me know. But, yeah, Terry's a good old friend. And, uh, yeah, I, I, Gordo, I think that, I think right now it's about 330 uh, that are active countries, uh, something like that. Uh, I've, I've worked uh, just about all of them, but, but I'm way behind on my QSLs. So if I owe anybody a QSL out there, uh, sorry, uh, I need to hire a manager, and maybe I'll get caught up. <laughs> That's great. Well, we're going to have to wind things down. This, the, the hour just goes boom out the window, and we've got so many things to talk about and uh, so many programs, but uh, there's there's some excitement coming. One of the other things I got to tell you is we're going to do, I think on the 26th of, the, of July, we're going to do a program from the Queen Mary found out, you know, I showed you their, their uh, QSL card. Well, Nate Brightman is a, the manager there. And yeah. you've probably worked them a couple of times, haven't you, Larry? Uh, no, uh, but I've actually, I've stayed on the Queen Mary. <laughs> the, the rooms are weird. Uh, yeah, the air conditioning is you open up a porthole. <laughs> Uh, well, they have a wonderful radio room there. It's on the air every day, so the visitors get to uh, see ham radio in action. So we're going to have Nate come on and talk about it. And he's, they're installing. Catch this, Gordo. I got a word today. They're installing uh, some Internet connections for him in that room so he can do that program because you know they don't have any Internet there. But they're going to have it for Nate for the Ham Nation program. How about that one? Oh, that is great. And Nate certainly deserves it. He's put a ton of time in there. Well, I'm just delighted to be back on the air after uh, Susie uh, got me squared away with this new camera. And uh, Larry, what an honor being on the same show as you and keep up the great music and uh, good work on working 300-plus uh, countries. Well, thank you. Likewise there, Gordo. Uh, uh what you have done for ham radio is probably, you know, a, a way above the call of duty. You know, uh, ham radio wouldn't be what it is if, uh, if you hadn't been there doing it. Yeah, we thank have you to, for the nice words. We have to thank Gordon because he's helped so many. And uh, we appreciate you uh, being with us each week, Gordon. Well, thanks to everybody that's uh, that's been here, the chat room. I'm sorry that we don't get more time to get on uh, on that with you, but maybe we'll hang around a little later and see what happens on there. But uh, send us notes, good or bad. We'd like to hear what you need uh, as far as programming. And uh, we thank Leo and all of the Twit family, and uh, we'll make it all happen here on Ham Nation. We'll uh, see you again next week. And as I told you, we're going to do the whole program on field day. So, uh, Larry, uh, I can't say enough. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, maybe we'll, uh, we'll get to catch you somewhere out there on the road. And uh, keep, those, keep those notes a-going. 38 special. Yes, you guys see me in your town, go check them out. So thanks a lot for the night, and we'll talk soon. Larry, good night to you, and Gordo, good night to you. Good night, everybody. I enjoyed it, and uh, good luck in uh, whatever endeavor you happen to do in ham radio. It's all fun. World's greatest hobby. 73, everyone, from Gordo. Good night, and so long. 73.